So, uh, I've had this up for a little while, I guess. Hopefully I've, I've checked it out. Um, I discovered uh, you in photography just like online, and I saw it on, on Facebook. Someone had shared something here or there, and I saw it. And I was just thinking like, you know, I, I like to come in, give a chat. Um, you know, because I think that, you know, I've been through kind of a bit of a journey through photography uh, myself, and you know, I just like to connect with other people and maybe kind of give back a little bit and kind of share what I've, what I've learned along the way. Um, you know, I graduated from the University of Windsor here as well, and right now I am a full-time photographer and a videographer. Uh, I've been doing this for sort of the past like five years, um, and uh, that's sort of, I've kind of just gone into it and, and done it, and it's kind of just worked and been successful for me. Um, and I'll kind of explain the story about how I got here and, uh, and what I do. Um, it's going to be sort of like a general talk, like I'm going to talk about, yeah, like what I, what I do and how I got here, sort of some of my views on, on photography and, and uh, you know, some concepts and ideas that I've sort of just picked up along the way uh, in my own kind of journey through, through the photo world. Um, and I hope that, you know, you guys will, you know, think about like how, how photography has affected your life too. Um, if it has like affected it or if it's just sort of like a small hobby. Um, and then hopefully like you'll be able to apply some of these ideas to yourself. If you have questions, like I hope you guys will definitely answer or, or sorry, ask uh, questions because, um, you know, hopefully like, you know, as I discuss and go through these slides, you know, if you have any sort of question like, you know, I have a, just a slide about some, some of the equipment I use. So honestly too, if you just want to ask like, hey, what, what lens do you use the most? What's your favorite, you know, this or that? You know, why'd you choose that? Um, you know, that, I think it's good to discuss those things and, you know, ask yourself like, uh, you know, what's in, what, what's in your bag? What do you use the most? What's your favorite? And, uh, you know, that kind of will help get things going in your mind too and help you sort of understand yourself as an artist and as a photographer as well. So why don't you just kind of like chat a little bit here first. Uh, who does shoot with DSLR? Yeah. Uh, is there anyone who just like solely shoots uh, on your phone? But everyone has Instagram, right? Right. Okay, everyone has Instagram. Uh, anyone still using, or not still using, but anyone using point and shoot? A lot of, uh, yeah, like a lot of companies have moved out of the point and shoot industry. Um, so, any Canon shooters? Raise your hands. And then Nikon? Anything else? Sony? Olympus? Was it? Sony shoot. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite thing to photograph? Like, does anyone have a specialty that they would say, or anything that they prefer? Yep. I really enjoy uh, astrophotography. So okay. Night sky. So okay. Yeah. I think, uh, like, you kind of like. Would you say like you're outdoorsy too? You just like being out. Outdoors? Yeah. I, I like landscape stuff. So. Yeah. Anyone else? Pets. Pets. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Uh, I, yeah, I know a pet photographer in Windsor, she runs a business too, like she loves dogs and that's just what she loves. Like, I think it's important to, to find something that you really like to do as well. Um, it's something that you're passionate about because that will that'll really drive, drive what you do as well. Uh, favorite time of day to shoot? Um, personally, I'd say just like, you know, I'm sort of an evening and night shooter. Anyone else? Yep. Yeah, like 100%. Uh, around sunset and then in the evening, that's time. Even sunrise, always no fun to shoot. Dawn in this, yeah. yeah. It's uh, I always find that dawn is too early because <laughs> I like to sleep in. Um, anyone with their favorite lens? Yep. Like um, seventeen to fourteen. Okay. So you're right. when I shoot a house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's so more of a wide shooter then? Yeah, wide shooter. And for the wedding also you can get a very beautiful sky and also the dressing of the yeah. yeah. I think that kind of like like it's important to kind of just think of these things too, like, you know, what lens do I use the most? What focal length do I use the most? Because that sort of just tells you, you know, what type of shooter you are 
And if you know that you like shooting wide, like, you know, go telephoto and challenge yourself, right? Um, also, do you have any favorite photographers? Um, myself, I'd say, like, I don't really follow famous photographers, but I really, really keep an eye on local photographers. Um, like, if I go to my Facebook likes, I have, like, 200 photographers just in Windsor that, that I follow. And I just like to see, like, what everyone else is doing. Um, and like there's there's so much talent just in you know just all around you. Anyone have favorite photographers, whether they're kind of big or just local? Yep. Probably uh, Jimmy Chin. He shoots for uh, National Geographic. He comes skis down mountains and shoots as he's going on a rock climb and shoot. That's pretty cool. Nate Myers. I don't know if you're the again I spoke. Oh Myers. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, I don't know, like, I, uh, to be honest, I haven't heard of them. I don't really follow, like, big photographers. I kind of just, I follow local photographers. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of, you know, really great, talented photographers. I'd suggest there's, uh, maybe I'll, like, run a couple websites up or, or like, Facebook groups uh, where a lot of the local photographers kind of gather and chat and, and, uh, and discuss. So, I just want to add a little warning here. I don't consider myself any sort of real expert. Um, I didn't go to art school. I didn't go to like communications or anything like that. Uh, I've actually never even taken a photography course. Um, everything I've sort of learned is just through the process of, of shooting and just being out there and taking, you know, and just reading tutorials. Um, I'm just trying to learn on the way and just and just kind of throw myself into it. So, you know, I don't really ever consider myself a good photographer either. Like, I always feel like it's always a process. You're always learning. Um, and, you know, I want to be creative and do my best and challenge myself. But, you know, I don't consider myself any sort of expert. But what I do say I am is I'm a full-time photographer and videographer. Uh, I do create this business out of it. Um, I did graduate from the University of Windsor in business, actually. Um, so I feel like my journey and my uh, success through creating the business has really been pushed by uh, my business background. Um, and that's sort of what has you know, just helped me view it as, uh, you know, in a marketing sense and how to, how to, how to continue to grow and, and be successful in that area. Uh, also say I am pretty experienced in shooting many subjects and situations. Um, you know, just just throughout the years, just putting myself out there, just reading and like seeing other people's photos and just going out and shooting and doing sports and wildlife and just just really trying everything. Um, I think that's you know the best way to learn. You know, just throw yourself in there. You know, and, and learn on the way and let experience be uh, the teacher. Um, and with that, you know, I've been able to shoot with natural light in a studio, you know, just on location with whatever, you know, whatever is around. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, although I don't consider myself anything sort of expert, hopefully I can leave you with a little bit of something interesting here. Um, so what I do. So Perk Shutter, uh, I started uh, with a friend of mine. Um, we do weddings, event, and commercial videography. Um, also, we have sort of like a, another half of the company that does photo booth rentals. Um, so, myself, I'm a videographer, editor, and photographer. Um, you know, we have sort of a team uh, within the company that does video, and then we have a team that does photo booths. Um, and yeah, we've, we've been really successful in the wedding industry uh, for the past five years. On top of that, I'd say like sort of my, I have a separate entity called John Chan Photography, like just my personal website. So that's sort of like my non-wedding photography business. Um, so, you know, I just do uh, portraits, um, done a little bit of architectural work here and there. Um, so I just sort of keep my own photography business separate, whereas Perk Shutter is more like weddings. Um, just recently too, uh, I just got my first assignment the other day. Uh, I was just signed up for the Windsor Star as their freelance uh, assignment photographer. So they have staff photographers, um, uh, you know, that are on, on payroll, and they send those guys out to like the real news. And then when they have just like you know special articles and, and other assignments like a store opening or something, uh, they'll send one of their freelance people out. 
Um, so they would call up a guy like me, send me up to the store, or you know, take a photograph of a specific person, and uh, and and do do a photo for them. So how I got here was sort of sort of a weird story. Um, I find it kind of interesting because it's like a lot of what I've done here has just been kind of like luck and and uh, none of it was planned really. Um, I started as a photography ho hobbyist. You know, I had like you know like a little point and shoot camera. Um, you know, just kind of running around photographing lots of different things. Uh, so I went to school for business. I was working in finance uh, as a mutual fund researcher for like seven years. Um, and myself, I was actually a dancer too. And I'd go to events and, and photograph, uh, photograph dance events. So that, that was kind of a, a, you know, definitely I'd say a passion of mine. Like I'd always go to events, always photograph them, uh, document them, and you know, take photos of my friends too. Um, at the same time, I was also exploring DSLR video. Uh, when the 5D Mark II, Canon 5D Mark II came out, uh, everyone kind of went crazy about video. Um, my friend had one, so um, I started shooting with that, just playing around with it, just messing around with it. And at the same time, uh, so cinematic wedding video was coming out and just kind of becoming popular at that point. Um, I had a friend who was getting married, it was back in like 2009, and you know, they were looking for someone to, to their friends hired me, um, and then it just sort of just all happened by surprise. Um, because a lot of people hadn't seen cinematic style video. Um, so, you know, got, caught their eye, got a couple bookings, and just kind of ran with it and started Perfect Shutter. Um, eventually, I went full time with Perfect Shutter because the company I was working with uh, in the mutual fund industry actually went out of business. Uh, you know, it happens. And at the same time, I was just running with Perfect Shutter, so we just went with it. And uh, my friend also uh, was sort of doing the photo booth. Thing, and we decided to bring our two companies together. And actually, having the two companies together really, uh, really helped too, um, because you know some decent press. And then, uh, so after that, I kind of continued with John Chan Photography and uh, creating, you know, that little separate entity there. Okay, so what's in my bag? So my first camera was this Fuji FinePix A101. Uh, back in like 2001, so like 14 years ago, I guess. And it was kind of funny, it's uh, 1.3 megapixels, an eight megabyte card. You can see like how much the, 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 the technology has changed now. I think it was like 300 or $400 back then too. Um, very simple little camera, like at like, a, like less than a one inch screen. And then from those, I'd say like this is what I normally shoot with now. Well, this is kind of generally most of the gear I work with. Um, shooting with the 5D Mark III, uh, Mark II. Uh, the EOS M is uh, is a mirrorless camera. Um, again, it's, it has the same sensor as uh, I think the 7D though. Um, so it's just really handy. It's very small, and it was cheap, so just kind of got one of those. Um, I think. One of the benefits of having the business is that like, it's allowed me to get this gear because I just reinvest. It's reinvesting in the business, right? So you know, as you know, you continue to book weddings and gigs. You know, you just kind of just go and get what you need. And I think like over the years, I've kind of refined this list too. Like I've had you know plenty of gear and lots of stuff in between. But you can just continue to like buy new stuff and try new stuff and see what works. Um, there is a great like used market out there, like. Because people buy and sell gear all the time. Uh, Kijiji, like lots of the stuff I've just gotten off Kijiji, off other photographers that I know. So I do think it's important to invest in gear. Like you know, equipment uh, isn't everything, but it allows you to do certain things that you can't without with a uh, without other equipment. You know, like you know, obviously a macro lens. Without a macro lens, it's very difficult to to shoot macro, right? Um, I'd say. Uh, my most used lens is probably the 70-200. The, the uh, I just find it's on my camera the most. Uh, of course, 50mm, you can shoot all day with a 50mm. 
uh, you can shoot a wedding all day with 50 mil. Um, myself, I, I've really gotten into uh, off-camera lighting too. So I've gone with uh, you know just speed lights and LEDs. And uh, yeah, I think it's important to to get into into off-camera light as well. Um, you know, it's a different world when you're able to control the light. So, how do you become a photographer? I guess you sort of people start viewing you as a photographer when you start posting work online, when they see you, you know, posting photos, right? Um, so, as far as photography hosting, like there, there's different sites like Flickr, uh, 500 Pixels, DeviantArt. Um, I've been on Flickr for a long time. I have a little bit of stuff on 500 pixels. Um, I don't know, it, it's useful there because a lot of them are, are uh, you know, they're community based. Lots of people will view them. So you'll, you'll get views and people will check out your work. And it's a good place, you know, different, good different places to check out other people's work too. Uh, of course, social media. Who has their own like social media or like their own photography page on Facebook? Uh, UWP has it. Okay, yeah, yeah, you have your own site there too. Um, you know, Facebook is kind of king, I guess, for social media, so, you know, it's easy to create your own Facebook page, you know, John Chan Photography or, or whatnot. Um, I just sort of like a little while ago, I started uh, going with Instagram, using Instagram as a promotional tool sort of for, for my professional photography, uh, rather than just personal, like posting my food all the time. Um, you know, it's, Instagram's interesting because I find that it's, it's really popular right now between the, like, uh, the kind of 14 to 18 year old set. So they're really heavy active users of that. And uh, as far as getting like, you know, I try to promote my dance work through Instagram. So a lot of the dancers are that age. And you know, it's sort of, I've been trying to attack it because you know, they're young, they're dancers. That's why I like to shoot. And at the same time, like if you're in dance, you kind of, it's ex it is an expensive hobby, so they go to their parents and ask their parents, hey, I saw this really good photographer, can I get a shoot? So I've been trying to use Instagram a lot more, um, and yeah, it's, it's all right. I, get, I, I think every tool is, is what you make out of it, too. Um, I also see some photographers do Tumblr, some wedding people use Pinterest, because Pinterest is you know, really popular in the wedding industry, just show it, you know, couples build their own Pinterest boards. Uh, I feel like Pinterest is kind of dying out and slowing down, though. And uh, also, of course, just having your own your own website. So, um, so last year, um, so another way to display your work is in a gallery, uh, having physical prints out there. Um, for for me, last year, I just decided, you know what? I want to do like an art show. So I just kind of just did it. Um, I've been to a couple of art shows um, at LaBelle. Uh, you know, just at university, I had, I had friends um, who were in art school. So they had various shows in their galleries, in their gallery. Um, so, you know, I'd sort of seen what was out there. I decided, you know, I'm going to go do my own show at, uh, at the uh, Arts Council Windsor Region Art Speed Gallery. Um, so that gallery is the first one there. Um, it's on Wyandotte, kind of close to Walker. So galleries, you have non-jury and jury galleries. So a jury gallery, they have like a panel of their experts and they, you, you put in submission and they decide whether, like who, who gets a show, right? Uh, so non-jury uh, galleries are, they'll pretty much let anyone uh, do a show. So you just kind of fill your paperwork, and you pay, pay your, your fee, um, and you know, uh, with at the RSB Gallery, it's you, you get it for a week. Um, I think it was like around one hundred fifty dollars. Like it's, it's not bad, right? And uh, you set up. It's up there all week. There's someone staffing it there all week, so like people will walk in, check out your stuff, um, sign your guest book, and you know you, you do see a lot of people um, go in and, and and check out your check out your work. And you know also at the end, you know just through reception. Um, you know, lots of my friends just came out, just had a party, and checked out the show. Um, it was a fun experience. Um, you know, even if you don't go out and do a full show, like a full personal show, there's galleries like the Mud Puppy Gallery and Common Ground Gallery, and they have sort of like these submission shows. Like they'll have like a theme, maybe like an outdoor theme, landscapes, or like a color or something like that. Um, 
And then, so, you know, maybe it'll be like 10 or $15 to submit, you know, one photo. So you submit it, they hang it for a week. Um, and it's just, you know, it's interesting to have a piece up. Um, so, so check that out. It, you know, it's, it's an opportunity to just get some work displayed. Um, also, there's uh, various coffee shops, restaurants, and businesses that will, will uh, display work as well. Uh, so I have Milk, Fog, the Squirrel Cage, um, there's a place called the Gallery at Visions of Canada, kind of all downtown, I guess. Um, but you, you can just walk in there, just say, hey, you know, I'm a photographer, I'm an artist. Yep. And it's really good, right, for like student photographers mm -hmm. who can actually display their work and they might yeah. get uh, in, uh, someone yeah. who buys their work. Yeah, for sure. Like, and I think I'm pretty, like, uh, those small businesses, just, they just do it for free. So you just walk in there, you put your stuff out, you know, it, you, and you just get, just get a scene, right? Um, you know, milk, like, it's a coffee shop, lots of people go in and out, they check the stuff out, and uh, I think it's important to, to just be in that kind of like artsy scene too, um, you know, because just to be seen and, and, and share your work too. So this was uh, sort of the tear down of my show. Um, that's the... That's the Art Speak Gallery there. Um, yeah, and I just kind of did display was uh, it was a dance photography show. Um, so I worked with a bunch of the dancers that I know. Kind of a feature image there and a few images below. Um, and it was a great experience. It was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I do it again, but you know, I just think got to think of a different angle or a different show to do. So. Becoming a better photographer, I want to, like, to, to give some advice to what I think is important to, to become a better photographer. Um, so definitely just go out and shoot everything. Because if you look at like, the world of photography, there's so many different, different genres and different areas you can go into and different subjects that you know, you'll have people, like I've met sports photographers, who just really, really love sports and like that's almost all they shoot. Like they'll never touch a wedding and they have no interest in doing a wedding. Um, and just going out and shooting everything kind of just it teaches you a lot about, about, about the technical aspects of it too because obviously sports, you learn you know, what, uh, what shutter speed you have to use. You know, if guys are running around playing basketball, it's a totally different you know, game than shooting babies. Uh, which is a business on its own, right? So you, know, you learn like the shutter speed, the focus mode that you want to use, um, and just I really think that just going out and shooting is, is the best experience that you can get. Um, and just going out and shooting too, you'll just meet lots of other photographers too. And uh, you know, just going out and shooting wildlife, I met just awesome photographers. Like I was just out in uh, like Optimus, hey Micmac Park, just. You know, I'm just shooting, trying to shoot a deer, and then I ran to a guy, and he just, uh, he's been publishing like National Geographic Canada, I guess, and uh, he's there all the time, and he's like, he's like, I know a really good selfie photographer, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Nadia, uh, I think her page is Mirrored Muse, but she does, you know, she does some weddings, and um, she does some portraits, but she does like awesome selfies, like she does a little modeling herself, and she just has like amazing concepts and is a really good selfie photographer, you know. Um, so yeah, I encourage you just go shoot everything, you know, of course this is not any sort of exhaustive list, um, but yeah, you know, just go up, read tutorials, shoot, and learn all the way. So just a couple uh, shots here and there. Um, I started getting into, you know, obviously portraits. Uh, one day I decided to go buy a white backdrop. Um, had some studio lights, started working with studio photography and shooting sort of like, there's a, there's a two light portrait here. Um, sort of learning how to light a background and, and shoot a person. Um, and as you go out and shoot, like you'll get you know, lots of different opportunities. Like this was, we were shooting out of an airplane. Um, you know, this opportunity came up when I was working with uh, the Windsor Exelix Development Corporation, and they wanted some, you know, aerial photograph, some aerial photos of Windsor. Um, so myself and a friend, we jumped on that. Uh, we rented a plane at the 
uh, it's at the airport, you know, you can just, uh, it's like maybe, I think like $250 and you get like a half hour scenic flight. Um, so we kind of split on it and just went and flew in a plane, like right in the cockpit and just and shot aerials. Uh, a little bit of macro, um, you know, just getting a macro lens, you know, it opens up a different world. Uh, this is the inside like of a watch, of uh, a mechanical watch. And, uh, you know, just, just for experience, just playing around. I was just sitting in my basement trying to light this watch and uh, just trying to do different things. And of course, like, just go around and walk around and shoot. Like, Windsor has a very beautiful, you know, riverfront, obviously. And the way the sun sets behind the bridge is just like, it's gorgeous. So, so go out and shoot. Um, the, the sunsets are beautiful. And you can just, you know, just do stuff like landscape, just anything outside. So a little bit of advice on analyzing photography. And I think that being a critic, being critical in photography too, is really what helps you become a better, uh, better artist. So when I look at a photograph, like, you know, some of the questions you should ask yourself is like, what, what do you like about it? Like, do you like it or not? If you like the photo, like, why do you like it? Is it aesthetically pleasing? Like, does it look good? You know, would you put it up on, you know, like, does it have value in that you would put it up on your wall and actually like buy a print? Um, so sometimes you know when you shoot, you might want to consider that. Like, is would would this look good on a print? Is someone going to buy this? Is it aesthetically pleasing? Is it pretty? Also, where does your eye go in a photo? And that sort of uh, it can become very technical too. Um, you know, when you talk about leading lines and the motion in a photo. But you know, you just want like, especially if you're uh, shooting a portrait, you, know, you want to focus on the eyes. You know, you want to be able to connect with the person in the photo. Uh, other things to ask yourself, like, what's the mood? How does it make you feel? Is there a story behind it? And now there de doesn't necessarily have to be a mood or a feel or a story. And that's sort of like where the idea of the art versus the science of it comes in, because you know, obviously, photography can be seen as an art. You know, it's up to interpretation. You know, some people say there's no right way to do a photo, but at the same time, there's science behind it too. Like your exposure can be right or incorrect. Uh, you can it can be out of focus. You know, so there's sort of an art versus science side of it. Um, I think one of the most important things to always think about is is where does the light come from, because you really start to. Uh, that, that, that's when you I, I think really start to understand photography, like. Um, when you analyze a photo and can understand how they shot it and you know, you know what the light source was and, and exactly what they did, um, you know, I think that you're well, well on your way. And also just being able to pick out like how was it edited, like you know, what's unnatural about it, like can you spot like a little you know, place where they cloned out things, and just the colors and color balance, um, you know, how was it edited and just like studying photos. And then also like I mentioned, the sort of the scientific side. Um, is it sharp? Is it exposure correct? You know, what does the f-stop look like? You know, what's uh, uh, what's the um, depth of field look like? And also, like, what focal length is it? Like, once you start studying it, you can kind of understand like exactly how they shot it and what and what the what the photographer did. So, a couple of samples. Uh, I just want you guys to to analyze my photo. Where is the light coming from here? Okay, from your right. Uh, so there's kind of like you can see like uh, like the hair light around her her head. So the sunset is kind of like behind her. And then actually, well, I do have another light because uh, you can see the shadow on the one side of her face, right? So I have another light coming down this way. It was uh, you know, an external flash I'd set. I could have done that with uh, with a reflector as well. I think it's interesting, like, stu study light, try to understand where, like, how, how the photo uh, came about. Yep. Was this high speed? Um, it was, uh, because, well, I probably would have shot, like, what, one two hundredths of a second. Um, yeah, one two hundredths of a second. Because that's, that's, like, the flash sync uh, number for Canon. And, uh, so I, I do a lot of dance shoots where, like, because um, actually my girlfriend runs a dance company and that's sort of how that has progressed too. 
So I do a lot of work for their company and shoot a lot of their dancers. And that's sort of become my specialty too. Like I love working with a dancer because, you know, you're shooting a person, but it's a, it, it is different because they're able to show like their beauty, their grace and their ability. So it's more than just kind of just shooting a model hanging out, I feel. And then it challenges you because um, you have to kind of perfect your timing of it, uh, you know, as they're hitting kicks and jumps. And, uh, you know, it's been interesting for me because like, I like to do walk around shoots and, and discover places. And that's sort of my thing, like discovering an interesting place that'll make the, the, the dancer look great. Just another dance photo here. Uh, this is what, kind of one of my, my favorite photos because it's just sort of bizarre and people don't know what's going on, like, like where she is. There's good places to shoot everywhere. This is in the Polisher Street parking garage uh, downtown. And what's going on here, we're just like walking around the parking garage. I think it was actually like at the end of our shoot. We were about to head home, you know, and I was just walking and then the ground is sloped, right? And I was just down here and I, and I looked up. So I'm at the bottom of the slope kind of looking up and what, like all that behind her is actually the ceiling of the parking garage. So you see those bands of light? Those are the lights in the, in the ceiling. And so I just, I was laying down on the ground, kind of shooting up the slope, and you know, it just made an interesting background, background there. Um, so yeah, that, that's where the light is coming from. Um, you know, I shot a telephoto here, and uh, just, just kind of spotted something interesting just from walking around. Um, this shot is actually right, right by Dylan Hall there. Um, you know, Again, sort of like, I feel like a lot of my photos sort of depend on and kind of ride the talent of the dancers. Like people are like, oh wow, but it's actually really the dancer that they're wowing. Um, yeah, like, it's amazing what, what, what some of the dancers can do. Um, myself, if you like look at my photos too, like I really like symmetry, I really like, um, you know, I, I look for interesting backgrounds here. So I saw Dylan Hall here and knew like, you know, I want you centered here at Dylan Hall. Um, so, you know, we kind of decided what sort of move he was going to do. Um, you can, also, you can see like, you know, again, just looking for like, you can see like a bit of a shadow right there. Um, I was hitting him with, with, uh, with an external flash there. Um, so yeah, I, th I think that looking for light can tell you a lot about photos, you know, where shadows are, where like the highlights in their eyes are. Um, and, and again, like uh, help you understand uh, how other people did their photos and what you can do. And this is another just uh, a shot uh, on top of actually the university, the, the new parking garage. Uh, again, we're just walking around trying to look for something interesting. Um, again, you can kind of see my love for symmetry and 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 trying to like find an interesting spot. We're just walking around on the roof and you know just looking for interesting stuff. Um, again, she's a dancer and we just kind of, I wanted to do like, I said, okay, just give me like a normal pose, just like, like a fierce and, and like interact with me, just look at me, and we, and we just shot that. So, becoming a better photographer. Uh, I've kind of said it a few times already, look for the light. Um, I feel like whenever I walk around too, I'm always like noticing, oh, look at the light coming through the window, look at the color of that sunset. You, know, you just kind of like, you always end up seeking light. Also learn to control the light. Um, I've mentioned uh, off camera flash, but even just buying a reflector or a, you know, a large, you can get like a big sheet of foam core from like the dollar store for a dollar. Um, and it changes, it, like that's that dollar changes your, your photography because instantly you're able to control light and you know, instead of having just you know the sunlight coming behind them, you, you put that card or reflector there, and you've actually you totally changed, uh, totally changed the image. Um, investing in your equipment, I, I do believe, is important. Um, you know, go out and get like the 50 mil 1.8. You know, it's 130 dollars. Um, it'll teach you to move around and and and, uh, and bring that f-stop down to 1.8. Um, that'll definitely change your work. Um, be critical of your own work too. Like, 
one, one thing I do is I revisit, like, you know, you go, you shoot like 200 photos with a person, um, you know, be critical of it and be critical of how much you share, share your best work, make sure you're putting out, you know, stuff that looks good, um, and go and seek advice and criticize criticism from the right people. Because I feel like, you know, when you go and post photos on Facebook, you know, you get like 60 likes, yes. And then like everyone does, that's how, how you get better, you know, you, 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 you follow great people, see what they do, try to understand how they do it, how they do, um, you know, what they do, and uh, you know, see what sort of advice and criticism you can get with them. Shoot with other people as well, and uh, really just kind of develop your craft. Never stop learning, never stop improving. Um, you know, there's, there's always more you can do out there. There's tutorials, there's you know, different techniques you haven't tried. Um, so challenge yourself and, uh, and make sure you go back and revisit your work. Because even your own editing, like I look back at photos that I edited like three years ago and I thought, think like, what, what was I doing? <laughs> and so I re-edit and then suddenly I like the photo, you know? And uh, it can be as little as something as like, you know, cropping it differently you can totally change a photo, make a new photo, and you know, turn you know something that you didn't like before into something that you really love. So, making money. So, weddings obviously is a big industry. Um, it, it's the one I operate in, and it's interesting because like that is you know, weddings are where people spend thousands of money on photography and video. Um, and it's sort of something that sort of doesn't go away. Um, it's, you know, it's a business, it's an industry that exists, and is, you know, throughout you know, economic downturns, people still spend money on weddings. Um, so, you know, it's, it's an interesting industry to be in. Um, it's, it's complicated, it's difficult to shoot weddings. But I mean, pe lots of people I know make full-time livings off being wedding photographers, and it's really enjoyable. It's, it's fun. Um, you know, you can be a portrait photographer, uh, you can do on-location portrait. Um, also, you know, I know lots of portrait photographers. They shoot families, they shoot babies, and they make they make a living off it. You know, charging you know maybe four hundred dollars for for a shoot, for a one-hour shoot. You know, there's also a separate world of you know photojournalism. Um, obviously, you know, uh, people who shoot for the star, um, you know, there's commercial, editorial, um, you know, sort of like in a different range, there's like a whole, there's a group of architectural photographers out there, um, people who do stock photography, like there are famous stock photographers who, that, they just do that for a living and, and they just, you know, put out all this work and people buy it and use it, you know, whenever they need and, uh, and make money that way. So there are ways to make money. Um, you know, it, it's challenging, and you know, you don't have to make money, obviously, out of photography. Um, but you know, there are different avenues. I think really, there, what to do is you have to just put your stuff out there, meet people, make connections, and that's how that's how people will see your work and get to know you. I'd say like lots of my lots of the work I'm commissioned to, um, the big majority of it is through like someone I know or someone you know, so someone that I'm friends with. Like, truthfully, like, well, non, I mean, non-wedding work. Like, my non-wedding photo work, um, you know, I kind of almost rarely get people who just say, like, oh, I just saw your website, and, you know, I'm interested in booking. It's more like someone, you know, someone who knows me or knows a friend of a friend. So, a little bit more about making money. Um, I do say perfect your craft, like if you are going to go into a business, um, really just learn and be the best that you can be. Um, invest in yourself, like it does take money and effort and time, it is a lot of time um, to you know, really put your best foot forward and, and market yourself well. Find a niche and define your style. I think that's important, it's very important uh, in wedding photography because um, the good photographers have a really defined style and look to their work. Um, and you know, if you if you if I see a picture, I can tell that you know that was Brandon Scott or you know or or who it was in the industry. Um, also, I think it's important to to really show your best work. 
Um, I see a lot of people who go out there and kind of like post too much. And like, to be honest, that can kind of hurt you too. Um, if you throw too much out there, um, you know, not everyone's going to flip through a gallery of 200 photos. But, you know, if you have uh, a couple of like, you know, five fat photos that are just absolute bangers that is really beautiful out of that gallery, then that gets people more people's attention than 200 photos. And uh, it's, it's all about marketing, marketing, marketing. Especially in the wedding industry, like the, the world of marketing and promoting yourself and doing wedding shows is like, you could write a book on, on, just, on just that. Um, so uh, when you have you know, something, something that's visual like that, it's very important to market yourself correctly. Um, and that, that's how people notice you. And also expanding your network um, it really is, I find like in, in terms of uh, really in the business world, it's really who you know. Like they say like getting jobs, it, it's who you know. Um, like I said earlier, getting gigs and getting bookings, um, the majority of them is through people I know. Um, the Windsor Star thing even was, you know, someone I knew like helped, helped, me, helped me get that too. So, you know, it, you know, you have to have that you know, perfected craft, you have to have that talent, but it really is a lot of, of your network and who you know. So just a couple of final thoughts here. Uh, a quote that I like and just something that, that you know, I came up with that I posted up at my, at my, uh, at my art show. So Marc Riboud uh, is an old like French photographer, I believe. And he said, like, taking pictures is savoring life intensely every hundredth of a second. And myself, being a photographer is a never-ending process. This is kind of corny, but a learning process that has taught me how to see the world differently and to find beauty in the people, places, and moments all around you. So I, I do think that photography has like, really changed the way I look at, at life in a way. Like, I'm always looking at light and looking at people and looking at things differently. And always kind of like thinking about how you can capture it too. And when you think about, um, you know, shooting weddings or whether you shoot like, you know, someone's first birthday or you shoot, you know, just portraits at an event, you kind of eventually see how much impact that like taking photos makes. Um, when they're, when you send them or post something and they instantly tag themselves and make their profile picture, like the, the person's really proud of that. And that's the face that they want to show everyone. So it makes you feel good inside, you know? Like you, you've captured them, you've made them feel beautiful, you've made them feel very handsome, maybe. Um, and that's what they want to show off to the world. And it's, I find that, you know, you just really want to, you know, whether it's capturing emotion or, or moments, um, you kind of really think about preserving that and and uh, you know, do it for yourself and for other people as well. So I think that photography has, has changed my life in that, in that way. So yeah, think about the difference that you're making when you take a photo. Uh, this photo here is just, again, a dance shot that I took. This, this one has interestingly been, been, interestingly been one of my uh, most popular photos. Just in terms of like selling prints and just the number of views, I had it like uh, just posted on Flickr, so they have like a, a view count, and it, I just noticed it like skyrocketing like into the thousands, and I wasn't sure why, so I did like a reverse image search, and I found that people were sharing it on Tumblr, so I was like, oh, someone just took my photo and shared it on Tumblr, and uh, I mentioned Tumblr before. Yep. What about watermark? Should have you put yeah. watermark there? So. Uh, every time everyone shares it, mm -hmm. knows that you did it, and yeah. how about credit to yourself? Yeah, obviously that, that's a good idea. Yeah. I, I'm kind of strange in that I've never really watermarked my work. I don't know why. I, uh, I don't know if it's like kind of laziness or what it, what it is, but I've, like, I have here and there, but for the most part, I just like, like a pure photo, put it up there. And you know what? I feel like if people want to see it, see it and share it, right? This is what I'm kind of putting out to the world here. Um, and you know what, I, I don't mind if people are sharing it. Um, you know, it's nice to have some credit 
you know. Uh, like I've like every once in a while, like I'll search on the things I do. Like I've uh, let's see, got a photo here. Like I did uh, a shoot for the Capitol Theater. So uh, you know, the Capitol Theater went un went under some new management. Um, it was taken over by the city. Um, they're redoing all the marketing material. One of my friends uh, worked at Capitol, so they contacted me. Like it's you know through that relationship, I went in there. Um, you know, was hired to do the shoot, and you know I put it up probably on Flickr. Um, tagged it Capitol Theater Windsor. And every once in a while, like I just Google Capitol Theater Windsor, and you end up seeing like tons of people using your photo on their own like blog and stuff like that. You know, it's kind of cool. You know, it would be nicer probably if I did put my my watermark on it. But I feel like it almost kind of spoils photos too. You know? I like it as it is, and I won't put my name on it. So, I don't know, that's just me. I don't know. So, yeah, that was, uh... So, any questions, like, um, about the wedding industry, any, about the process of shooting, or anything more about galleries or anything? I've kind of like just thrown a lot and just kind of talked a lot about what I do. Um, I think it's kind of a weird story just kind of from a business background and kind of just like going into all of this by accident. Um, but it's been, it's been fun, it's been a blast. It's, it's, it's fun being your own boss and being able to do something creative and that you really like for a living too. For her, um, this was in Northern Canada and it was this giant treehouse resort. So like this tre giant tree house is above her and like they have it for rent. It's really, really cool. And you know, we went up there, shot for two days. Um, uh, she's kind of like a famous YouTuber, like, uh, like a um, like cover artist. And you know, I, I find that like, that, that's part of the story too. Like I just had just strange and interesting experiences just doing stuff like this, like going up yeah. north and shooting a video for two days and staying in this giant tree house. Um, you know, there's theater photography, because um, when there's, you know, there's lots of shows in theater and dance art acts. Um, so that's been a part, big part of what I do too. And again, just also in the dance world, like, there's different techniques. Um, and you'll find that, like, there's always different stuff to learn. Like, you can do, like, slow shutter sync. Um, which is what I've sort of done for the photo on the left, where you uh, you hit them with flash, but then you have a really slow shutter speed, so you actually get a little bit of movement still in the photo. You see the lights kind of blur and move around, so you can kind of introduce a little bit of, uh, of movement into the photo. Uh, there's also always different techniques and different stuff you can do out there. There's there, Kristen too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Are there two speed lights in the right photo? Uh, in the right photo, no. I think I just had one, and then the backlight is just the sunset kind of creeping in. And that was in like uh, the Walkerville area by like the building right behind it is uh, Twisted Apron. I just like love walk around shoes, just like going out with like a subject, just walking around. Like it's interesting because you just kind of like discover your city and. Uh, it's it's cool for the viewer too because they see they see their city differently too. What time? Is uh, that was probably yeah just evening. Uh, sun was setting because you know it's kind of nice and golden behind them. Right. Hope you guys learned something. I'm really glad. I'm somewhat inspired by you know what we've done here.